What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with episode number 15 of No Labels Necessary. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday, dropping full episodes here on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to your podcast. If you don't know me and Ja'Cory, we are music marketers, music entrepreneurs. We have a music agency that's helped many artists blow up and also major labels do what they need to do for their clients. But... Here we just talk about content, business, music. We 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 just having fun, y'all. We just having fun. So, as always, y'all know, we like to start with the advice mm-hmm. each episode, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about some serious advice. I got some dope advice, game changing advice. <laughs> <laughs> One could even say life changing advice. And what could even say life changing advice? <laughs> so check this out. If you don't have anybody on your team that's acting like this, then you need to rethink your team. This is why Young Thug's engineers underrated. Sometimes you don't have everything available to you. Jeffrey, for example, I mix the whole thing and then the night before it came out, I get a, a text that's two or three pages long of notes of changes that he wants to be made. But I no longer have access to a studio. It is 3 a.m. I can't get one. And so all I have is my headphones and I'm sitting in a hotel room and I'm like, how am I going to do this? Like how? And I don't have that much time because I have to turn it into mastering by 11 so that mastering can do it by like four so that we can turn it in before midnight. So what I did was I only had my headphones, but I needed another reference point. So I rented an Uber and I sat in the back middle seat <laughs> and I plugged in to like the aux and I was like, dude, turn it all the way up and raise all the windows. And he's like, no. And I'm like, please. And I'm like, and he's like, no, I'm like, cool. I'm gonna get out because I don't want to go anywhere. I need, I don't have a car. I'm in New York city. And I was like, I need a reference point. And I was like, you can drive around for a half hour and run the tab up. I don't care. Like just go wherever. And so I just sat there like tweaking mixes in the Uber and like the dude was miserable. Uh, shout out to that Uber driver. Bruh. <laughs> shout out to that Uber driver. Shout out to the engineer, first and foremost. So first and foremost, I, I, I wish I even caught your name. But boy, y'all need somebody on your team like that. If you don't have nobody on your team like that, boy, re- rethink it. And this is a real conversation about teams and just what you're willing to do for even your own self. Mm. But, bro, like you said, that Uber driver, though. Bruh. It's crazy because there's so many chances. Thug is big enough where that could have been a great moment. Yeah. And he called somebody who was hating the whole idea of it. I would have loved them. Like, oh, shit, I'm hearing some young thug early samples. This is the mix engineer. This is before it happens. This is how it happens. And I'm getting paid at the same time. Yeah. Right? The pay part would have got me, honestly. I mean, okay. I might have been, you know, New York maybe a little suspicious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, Facts. No, yeah. So, but that's a fact. Maybe he didn't care about Young Thug, you know? But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying just like the chances, it, it, it sucks that it had to happen that way. But you know what? I like most music enough, or I'm open to enough music, even if it wasn't some music that I super loved. Mm. If I was driving especially since i'm getting paid for it i would have thought the shit was pretty cool yeah you know what i mean I'm like yeah. this is kind of cool like this guy's doing this and i'm hearing this and then especially if it's something that end up being big yeah that would have been a cool moment for me but the level of creativity that it takes to not just say oh i'm done yeah right let me go find an uber driver so i can have another reference right then to be able to debate and go to bat like yo man come on bro like make this happen negotiate your whole process, these are the type of people, bro, we need on the team, man. Yeah, bro, you don't find engineers like that. You, you don't find Not everywhere. Like I don't know where you found him, but not everywhere. Bro, team period, man. If you, if you got that kind of mentality, be on the team. Y'all, people I always ask about internships and things like that, whether <laughs> it's us or anybody else. Hey, you, you moving like that, people will figure out some way for you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll figure out some way for you. Yeah, 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 bro. It's like the, I'm trying to think the equivalent of that for us, like, I don't know, like your Wi Fi go out and you set up an ad from a flip phone or something. You know what I'm saying? That would yes. that would that would win me over. Yes. I'm like, hey, bro, you better than me because I wouldn't have did that. <laughs> so I was a teacher for a period out of college, a year in this program, not a traditional school system. And the students, like, you know, a lot of them were down bad, had some tough situations. This one um woman in particular i remember she had just had a, a child i think she already had one mom was um on drugs and all that stuff wild and stuff and and she, her lights went out so she couldn't do her homework and i don't know why 
she had to do this on the floor, but she did her homework on the floor on her cell phone. Uh, with the cell phone light? What do you mean? Like on No. She did her homework on her cell phone. Oh, just like, it was like some okay, submit okay. stuff, but it yeah. wasn't like no regular. Oh, you just gotta push some buttons. You, you legit have to write. Yeah, she did her entire homework on her cell phone, and I was like, hey, "You better than me. You could have told me this story, and I would have probably just given you an extra <laughs> couple days <laughs> to turn that shit in." <laughs> but I was just like, "Yo, this is crazy. This is dedication. That's that's dope. You know what I mean." And that's what I think of when I hear those type of situations. Yeah. Like yeah. someone who's like, I got to get this done. <laughs> so it's not surprised I, you know, kind of tracked where she's going. Yeah. That she's in a pretty good situation <laughs> right now. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you can't, ha- she does not in control of the mom situation and every everything, but her career, got some good jobs, you know, kids are doing, doing decent. So all I'm saying is if you ain't doing your homework on the ground. Yeah, she must have got a good grade on that. You know what I mean? Or whatever it was. I couldn't give her a bad grade. You know. <laughs> hey man, you you reward the work ethic. You know, you grade accordingly the the information. You know what I'm saying? But I feel that. You know. You know, there was some. It would been bad PR. <laughs> it wasn't a. It was it was it was subjective, right? Um, there were some subjective parts of. of yeah. Okay. It, right? Okay. So the hardcore <laughs> stuff, yeah, she got judged hardcore, and that I couldn't do nothing about. Nah, it just is what it is. I mean, this is a but, hard woman story, but this is wrong. Yeah. No, no, no. Hey, yeah, wrong is wrong and i and i would be such a horrible um example <laughs> if i let you think this shit is okay no 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 i she she got decent grade but um it's interesting because this also relates to even if you think of like think about um like diddy having people run for the cheesecake <laughs> yeah and diddy if you listen to his stories he he actually when you hear what diddy did himself then yeah. That shit isn't that shocking, yeah, that right? That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you like, yeah. oh, this man really did run five blocks to go do X, Y, and Z him <laughs> like his, his himself. He t- took him a year to get his internship with um what was the label at the time? But with Andre under Andre uh, Andre oh, Harrell, yeah. Uptown Records, yeah, yeah. I believe. Took him a year to get that because he was just like trying to convince him, trying to convince him. I think he kept bothering Heavy D at the time and then Heavy D would be like, yo, this kid. And then Andre, like, he just kept on hitting those touch points yeah. until finally they were like, all right, cool, we'll give you a shot. And then slowly but surely, he ends up in the position that he he ended up in. So look, this is something that we get in the music industry. Right? Work ethic is re- rewarded, but at the same time, we're in 2022 and but I I know people will be like I for damn sure wouldn't do that. <laughs> like, I ain't I ain't want to say it. You know what I'm saying? That's what but I was- <laughs> I'd be like, man, it's a it's three. All right, maybe I can get up at like six and, get, and, and then like, see yeah, and I then can see. figure it out. Yeah, but that's also me not knowing how long it takes to do something like that. I'm yeah. assuming I would have been fucked in that situation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I I would imagine the same just because of the the engineering stuff. Like yeah. it seems like it's quick, but it's not. Oftentimes, yeah. Yeah, I already know. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I think it's cool though because it's like these are the moments where you find out which team member is gonna ride hard. Like you know, it's like everything is. Everybody does a good job when shit is easy. Yes, you know when things are good and and everything is set to go the way. I'm pretty sure, if, you know, things that ended when they were supposed to end. You know, it would have been happy. It would have been a normal day. But it'd be mm-hmm. the moments like these, either the the random ones that come up like this, or the forced ones like the ones that Diddy push you through. Yep. But either way, like these are the moments where you can tell, like, oh, this team member is really like for the cause. You know, not even just for this specific situation, but like just for the cause entirely. Exactly. And that's that's what it comes down to. That's really the point. What you're trying to find out in whatever circle at any time is not just about that specific instance, like you said. It's just like, do you care? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? We're not trying to have to do this shit every day. Yeah. Like and have to move on this type of time. However, there's moments and times when shit's going down and let's just get through it. Then we can recoup, ask questions later, you know, figure out how to avoid that scenario later. Yeah. Not just sit down, sulk or say this is hard or, or let this time go by. The whole game is minimizing L's. That's the way I personally see it. Like how many L's, if I can get over this and make this a W right now and then figure out how to get to that W easier later, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm not about to just take an L that I don't have to take. That's yeah. what I see. Yeah, bro. This one of those uh, A players that Alex Ramosi be talking about. A players. It's 
let's let's talk that talk real real quick, and then we can transfer to we got another amazing topic for y'all. But like, talk about those A players. Man, what, what do I start? So I mean, A players are essentially the the people on your team that are like the superstars, right? So these are your Jordans. You know what I'm saying your your. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that. These are your Jordans, pretty much, right? Like the people that you know that can not only do the job that you gave them, but oftentimes like go above and beyond, right? Mm-hmm. Either within the capacity of their own role or even you know outside stuff. Like we have team members that maybe sometimes pick up slack in jobs that they don't aren't getting paid for it. You know what I'm saying? But they see a problem there, and they're like, okay, I can if I can help you fix this pretty quickly, then fuck it, let's do it and get the, the job done right. Those are the those are the A players in my head versus I guess a. B, C, and below players, like someone that maybe just does like the job just good enough. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. B players are probably players that do it like just good enough. You know what I'm saying? Like enough that like I, it'll be hard for Sean to justify firing me. You know what I'm saying? Because I did technically do the job. You know what I'm saying? Like like you asked me to do it. <laughs> Even But the yeah, A players yeah. going to be like, oh, I'm going to do what Sean told me to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to take two or three extra steps to make sure maybe this other thing is done. Or I even fix this thing. Sean didn't even realize that. You know, the way he asked me to do it is fucked. This is the better way to do it for real, for real, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do it. That's so like, that's how I look at it. Like, your A players are those people that go above and beyond. And, like, they're just the superstar people on your team. Like, literally the people that, like, you know, if they quit today, your shit might crumble. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Another thing about the A players that I've constantly heard, right, and observed as mm. well, right, the whole idea is A players like to be around A players. Yeah. B players – don't want to be around A players because they make them look bad. Yeah. So oftentimes they're going to help you hire people that allow them to look good and them to just keep moving at the pace that they move at. Yeah. A players, they weed that out. A players only want to move with A players because they know the type of effort they're putting in. Mm-hmm. They know the type of quality. They got a certain standard and they like to learn Right and be become better, and only other A players can do that for them. Yeah. So where it becomes a virus is when you don't have any A players on the team, and then every hire that you have up under there, or every by person you bring around, or after that is a lesser person, quote unquote. You know, you know yeah. what I mean, lesser person. Because nobody wants to be around anybody that's going to make them feel insecure because they're performing so well. Yeah. Versus having A players where, where hey, yo, bro, we got to get rid of him because he's not doing his job, dog. Mm-hmm. Like, going to let you know. Like, hey, man, this person needs to step up. So they want people because it's going to make their jobs easier. They yeah. know what kind of time they're on. So it becomes that virus because – your team itself creates the culture. It's not just you. You can say I put in these rules and da 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 da. But just like you can, you can raise a child, they're in the house with you. But then you send them off to school, and they're in school most of the time. And the people they hanging around is going to define how they are and how yeah. they move. Your team works with the rest of your team, and you you're not the only person who's defining how the company or group moves. Whether that's like you're a legitimate company or just like your crew or your your artist collective whatever that might look like so the a player a b c player is actually one of the simplest things Mm -hmm. that i found that that's actually easy to apply or like kind of observe over time where you know sometimes you hear like a lot of these theories and invite pieces of advice but you don't get a chance to apply them I've, i've seen it be you know I seen it to be pretty true, and, I, and they also say, "B players, if you don't, if you have too many of them, and then you also have A players, I'm, but you have, let's just say you got one player and and four, one A player and four B players. The A player will come down to the B players after time, most likely." Because they're like, I'm not about to do all this extra shit. Yeah, they're getting away with this right? shit. I might as well get in on it too. I did that in school. I remember yeah. there was this one project that it was like we had to decorate a tissue box or something, right? Yeah, it was like <laughs> science. And we had to do something. What? What? Yeah. What? Look, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even remember all the details. Probably something with paramecium and stuff like that. <laughs> but we had to decorate this tissue box somehow. And I went hard on it because I was artsy and stuff. And I like to like, so it was just like an artist project, and I would, and I could draw real great and all that. So I, I went hard. Mine was beautiful, and I got 
like a hundred, right? Mm. But then I saw other people <laughs> who got hundreds too. And I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. And that was the day. Like it was a definitive day where I just stopped trying to school. <laughs> I remember definitively. I was like, oh, fuck this, bro. Like, <laughs> and, you know, I was still doing good and getting decent grades without doing anywhere near the trying, yeah. you know? And, and that was probably happening at other times in school here and there. But that was the only time I could visually see it, the yeah. amount of effort. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh, hell no. How is this the same? We are not the same here. You know what I mean? I've been so, that person for other people. You said what? I was that person for other people in school. Hey. I was like, hey, right. man, what? You did what? Oh, yeah, no, I'm not doing all that. I'm like, hey, man, I wouldn't either. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. Welcome to the club. Exactly. So, <laughs> no, nah, once once that happened, it was clear. So, and, and I could, so I could see how that affects the A players. Yeah. And then- the last thing I, I remember, because it wasn't Alex, but like the first person I've heard mention the A player theory was A players have a certain level of respect for you built on the people that you bring in to the community. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like if you bring in a bunch of C and B players, it's one thing to bring them in and they might give you that benefit of the doubt. At first, because you know you bring them in, but when they see this person's performing at a certain level, and you keep them around, mm-hmm. they're like, "I like what's up, Jacory? What's yeah. up, Sean? Or what's up? Insert whoever you are, like leading your team, whatever." It's just like, if this is what type of time we on again, maybe I should drop my 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 um my efforts, or maybe I should go to a place that's gonna allow us to perform. And challenge me and, and grow, da 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 da, all those things. So uh, it's always in your best interest. Of course, A players are more expensive, right? Um, They're worth it. Right? 1,000%. It's like, uh, what is it? Like Alex always says, the best way to keep an A player is to pay them like 1.5 times the market rate. He's like, because they're going to make you like a three to five X return on whatever, right? So the money's worth it. Right. You know, or you like know. the one A player is worth like three B right. players or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it does depend on what business you're in. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? That does depend. But, you know, the, the fact that one of them is definitely worth more of everybody else because it's also inefficient to have like three, four people where you could just have one person doing yeah, it yeah. until you get to a level of business where now you have to specialize. Like, and most artists and teams – not even just new artists. Most teams for artists do not scale past a point where you can truly have specialists as a part of a core team or the core company. Because even a fifty dollar, fifty million dollar business is a small business, mm-hmm. all right. And you might only have ten people on your team for that, which is cool, right? That's great. But the the type of thing that you're doing, you you might not have anybody who could just, let's say. Just do influencer campaigns and just do uh, your social media management and get paid like a true A player, right? Because they're an A player at social media management. And then just be your manager and just, you're typically going to have overlap. Oh, you might have that one marketing person who's killing all the marketing person. You mm-hmm. might have one manager, one, I don't know, right? Um, just break down your team. But you have to be, and that's the that's the interesting part. So you got that one side. Of you have to have the right business model, the right timing, and still just find the right people. Sometimes you find A players early or in their development, so but so they're A where they are, but maybe not where you need to go. So A players need to stay A players. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side, for those of y'all who might be looking at jobs for yourself, it doesn't pay to be the A player in some categories as it does in others. You could be a B player in some categories and get paid more than an A player in other categories. All right. Uh, and that's something to keep in mind, right? <laughs> it just just is what it is. You could just be a social media page runner and help people come up with their posts, but it's hard to scale yourself, right? And you but you're really, really good at it and you're only doing it for one one person mm-hmm. versus, I don't know, like you are running ads for multiple people. And I'm not even, I don't even want to say ads, but like, let's just say you're a marketing strategist in general. That part, you might, that person might be C at so, my social media management, but 
if they can be a marketing strategist and help manage a team and they're not the best manager, that's still worth more because <laughs> yeah. they can manage five people while you're just one person. Yeah. So as you move throughout the marketplace, know that it's not it's not a flat marketplace. You have to get skills within this music shit, keep leveling up because the money gets made different. You could be really great in this category, but again, like, but these people got four or five different categories. I know publishing, licensing, management, you know what I mean? Like, there's all these different categories, yeah, and as a whole, yeah. I'm still worth more than you. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's fair. And I, I feel like, too, sometimes you get, especially in music, like, you get forced into being a B player in certain situations because music is the industry where it's like, yo, how can I get this one person to do eight different things? Right? Because, yeah. like I said, the money's slow, right? So it's yeah. like, I might only be good at social media manager, but you got me running errands for you on tour. You got me mm-hmm. distributing your music. You know what I'm saying? You might have me shooting your your content for you and then now you're you're judging me as say really a C player in some of these situations because like man I'm an A over here but everything else I'm I'm B C and it's bringing my average down. And I, I don't know, I, it's, you already kind of touched on that, but I do feel like we get caught up a lot of that in music because it, it's, the, it's the game of how can I get as much money as possible for as little as, as, as possible spend, right? And like you said, a lot of mm-hmm. times like A players are going to be expensive, you know? So it's like, do I go and pay this person, this marketing manager, 150k a year and that's all they focus on or do i keep letting my cousin do it you know what i'm saying he all right at it you know what i'm saying <laughs> that ain't really his main thing but he good at it he good enough you know what i'm saying yeah. like I'm, I'm just gonna keep spinning wheels here until i don't know either he gets sick of me or i decide to finally spend the money i feel like music people get trapped in that shit Easy, so much yeah. bro like you I mean you'll see some rappers sometimes be big bro and you'll be you see somebody stand next to him, you be like, damn, that dude been standing there for like seven years. You know what I'm saying? Like, what does he do, bro? And you might learn a little bit about him. Like, oh, he's just like the homie that kind of do a little bit of everything. It's like, bro, how'd you get this far? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you you either not giving him enough credit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you fucking up on the other side. It's like, right. bro, how are y'all still here? You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, I agree with that, bro. It's like, it's, it's, a, it's a bad, it's a terrible sickness in music with that, bro. Y'all got to start hiring people, man. Artists be allergic to hiring people, bro. I don't care what nobody say. You said they got to start hiring yeah, people. Yeah, start, bro. They be allergic yeah. to hiring people, bro. Yeah. Ah, but that's a whole skill in <laughs> itself, too. So maybe yeah. that's part of it, right? Yeah, that's fair. That's I don't fair. know. Maybe we should start something where we're just going around helping artists hire people. That'd be far. Yeah. Yeah. We know how to, we know how to build a, know some cool people. A, a marketing agency. You know what I mean? Marketing teams. We built that. Maybe we should try. We should oh, start building we, marketing teams. We, we right. should start building marketing teams. Somebody tell you that deal. Y- y'all heard it here first. Yeah, no, no, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Hit us up. Hit us up. Y'all know how to get at us. If you don't know how to get at us through the many ways online, then you're probably not qualified. Yeah. So hit us up. <laughs> hit us up. No, I'm just playing. But hey, we got another <laughs> topic. YouTube has changed and it's changing constantly. There's been some major changes that all artists need to keep in account. And one of our Brandman Network members actually brought this up in the community. Um, if y'all don't know about Brandman Network, it's our private community for artists, music um, managers, some dope professionals, really a lot of dope people in there. And we talk, we have some conversations, a lot of one-on-ones. It's free, completely free, completely free, but you still have to get accepted. Like everybody can't just hop in it. So brandmannetwork.com, go ahead and click the invite if you want to give it a try, but check this out. Nina Asta said, has anyone else noticed that YouTube is recommending more videos with low view counts? In the last couple of months, I've gotten way more videos that have views in the hundreds that I usually do. And it was dope. Like Rohan said he saw the same thing. Uh, Mandy, I, I start saying myself i was like yo actually i have seen it but it didn't click until yeah. i saw somebody mention i was like damn i have been seeing a whole bunch of views in the hundreds right so there's some things that this relates to right and that's what i want to talk about um but before i, I do that i'm gonna pull up this youtube page and you can already see if i go down far enough there's gonna be well, look at this, 636 views. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see if we can find another one real quick. Uh, Five days, five days. That's 3.3K. That's not the, the lowest. 
uh, 29 views. That one crazy. But he had, oh, something like hour. I said, he had to have just uploaded that. Yeah, okay, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'm not used to being early to a lot of stuff. So I, I was, when I started noticing that and they said that, I'm like, okay, and this is not just happening for me. It's definitely a thing. And why is this happening? Well, I'll say this. It's clear that YouTube is leaning into becoming an even greater discovery platform than it already is. Mm. And a lot of this is driven by shorts. Mm -hmm. That's my theory. And the ongoing beef with TikTok. And the ongoing beef with TikTok. <laughs> of course. Of course. Because when, and this is a positive thing for all of us to be able to take advantage of. All right. Because, you know, YouTube, it got to the point where it was only based off of the behavior of what you previously were looking at which is great that's highly interest based that's what makes potent um tiktok potent that's what makes youtube very potent both versus instagram right it's not just your social sphere it's the interest based sphere but with that being said if you are blatantly based off of my last videos which most people were then i'm missing my subscribers mm -hmm. all right so the people i'm subscribed to i'm not seeing much or if people are subscribed to me they're forgetting about me and that's doing a disservice so i'm not discovering content that i have a likelihood to be interested in but then on the other side you also can get caught in your loop and if you see this obviously i've been watching shit on our channel right but you see more from this channel for you. You see that tag? Yeah. So they're going to start recommending things that they just think you might like out of your sphere. Right? So it's like, ah, he hasn't been to the... He's been behaving like he's interested in these topics, so I'm going to show him more stuff on this topic. But if I saw that he had the behavior that I liked on a channel in general, I'm just going to offer a full playlist mixed from that channel. And that's just pushing people down a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. That's all they're trying to say. Like, hey, man, we think you're going to like this rabbit hole based on some of the stuff that you've done. So if you can get somebody to watch probably like three, four of your videos consistently. I don't know if there's a watch time, how the algorithm is, um, is building this particular recommendation out, but it's pushing towards discovery, not just of individual videos, but a full playlist of channels that you like. So this stuff is going to, like this is gonna keep happening. And I don't even actually know. I might not have the screen shared for people who <laughs> y'all didn't see that last post. So let me go back and show this. So if you see the mix or that I keep highlighting and it says Ramen Network, more from this channel for you. That's something that they're gonna be doing and be doing more consistently. If you go to our channel page, it's for their music. They've made these separations. Right. And why are they done these separations? Because uh, for one, shorts and videos were getting mixed up and that shit was just a horrible experience for the users. Mm -hmm. Like We all hated that. Like, like dang, I can't even find a regular video I want to watch because y'all got all these shorts in the way. But now with shorts being in its own tab and they have its own their own analytics completely, which we haven't used shorts heavily coming soon, folks, coming very soon. Now that they have those separates and the stats being taken separately. We have a foundation on YouTube now to do exactly what Leo Cohen was talking about. Have these shorts help people discover the long form content. Yeah. But you have to have it in, in these separate spaces for that to happen because before what was happening was the shorts, even on the data side, was getting included in the channel watch time. So if I drop a video for two, 20 minutes on average, and you're watching 10 minutes of that on average. That means my channel's watch time is 10 minutes. But I started posting all these shorts because I'm trying to get views and blow up. Then all of a sudden, my watch time dramatically drops. Yeah. And that was what was happening. It was discouraging users from doing that. But now they got it separate. So people can consume your shorts. Your watch time stays the same. So everything um, can continues to grow in its own category. But it doesn't guarantee that either. I've seen a few channels where they only do shorts. No, they don't only do shorts. They do a hell of a lot of shorts because they're trying to grow and get get looks. But their regular content isn't good enough. So they'll have a whole bunch of content with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of views. But then their regular long form content has like, I don't know, 300 views. Mm -hmm. And it's all like that. There's no content with a thousand views, but the content was horrible. 
to be honest. Like, because it was almost like, oh, yeah, we just made our shorts video longer to, yeah. <laughs> to try yeah. to, like, rework it. Yeah. So, you know, don't try to hack it that way. That's not going to work. Um, I think people would think you can just, like, they did have a lot of subscribers, a, a couple of them. Um, like, so you can use shorts to try to just grow that way from a subscriber standpoint. But you're not going to get the full benefits of YouTube if you don't use the actual videos. At least that's, I don't see that happening right yeah, now. Yeah, they're going to always prioritize the long form. I like always prioritize about why you think that is more ad space, yeah. I feel like it's as simple as that, yeah. Like, hey man, we can only put a, an ad and a half in your 30 second short, but we can put now. You tell me how to video you watched earlier, they had like four ads in the first like 20 minutes of it, you yes. know what I'm saying? So it's like you can't do that on the short, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, that's real, yeah. But I, I, I do like it, it makes me think of um. The view boom you get when you first start making TikToks. You know, people always talk about how like their first handful of TikToks, you know what I'm saying, get like a couple hundred, a couple thousand views. Mm -hmm. And you can tell it's TikTok incentivizing people to stay, right? And keep making content. In my head, this is YouTube's way of saying, like, hey, small creator, all is not lost. You can still get some attention on here. Cause there anybody that's ever posted a YouTube video knows there's nothing more discouraging than shooting that video, editing it. And then come back a week later and that shit got like nine views on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It hurts, bro. You know, because the, the time commitment for YouTube is so much greater mm -hmm. than the time commitment for other platforms, right? For, for the possibility of very little to no return on it, you know what I'm saying, in the view standpoint. So I feel like, like you said, that they know like, hey, in order for us to seriously compete with TikTok, we can't only be, I guess, attractive to them in, in a matter of discovery and money Right, which is their two one of their two biggest playing cards. We have to also be friendly to the small creator. Yeah, you know, because TikTok is very friendly to the small creator. Like you could be a nobody today, post for the first time tomorrow, and a couple weeks have an audience, right, and have people viewing your content. And so that yep. is always, at least in my head, what was going to make TikTok be more attractive than YouTube is like, hey, my the amount of work I have to put into my YouTube channel to get a hundredth of the amount of engagement and views compared to TikTok is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, or really any other social platform. But now it's like YouTube is like, hey, little guy, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to really compete with Mr. Beast. We're going to give you some some feed space just like we give him, right? Like, you don't have to now know how to hack the algorithm and create an amazing thumbnail. All those, all those things matter, right, for the watch time to continue going up and to get people to kind of stick around. But you at least get a couple of views on it, you know what I'm saying, without any of that stuff, which hopefully motivates you to want to get better at that stuff and, and, right. keep, and keep sticking it around. So right. that that was kind of the first thing I saw because like all the channels I've seen that have this going on, like they look like they're not completely new, but a lot of them haven't been around for long. Like I was watching, uh, what made me notice is there's like this gaming channel I found a couple of days ago. I mean, that guy had like 300 subscribers, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm like, why is he on my feed? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, Did you like his content? I did like it. You know, it was cool. See, it was it was it was, it was on brand. That's dope. <laughs> That's that right there is the encouraging thing for artists, yeah. right, who are trying to build. This is the time to give YouTube another shot, mm -hmm. right? Like Jacory said, it sucks to go through all that work, post, and barely get any views, and that's how it was for a good minute. Yeah, bro. Right now, that window's open, but we don't know if it's gonna last forever. So take advantage while that time is here, because, I mean. Seeing all, so many people with a couple of hundred views, I was definitely, I don't know, it, it did it did shock me for a second. Cause I, 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 I would first I would literally just say, why is it showing up? That's how you, how much you know YouTube wasn't so much of a discovery platform for people that were new for such a long time mm. that we didn't even say, oh, I'm early to this or. Oh, what is this? We literally said, why is it showing yeah. up? <laughs> like, it doesn't have enough views to show to me at this time. Almost like you offended, right? That's a that's a different type of mindset. So they're changing that mindset in the consumer for a while. And if you can tap into that while it is a thing and people are getting used to like just checking things out. Yeah. Did, you, did you subscribe to the dude or like at least hit the like button or I hit the like button. You know, okay. I, didn't, I didn't subscribe. It's like a lot for me to subscribe. I need it, at least three videos. It takes a lot for anybody to describe yeah. what you do. That's, that's a whole nother yeah, point, yeah. right? <laughs> but that's that's love right there. Like you got somebody only you said 300 subscribers? No, yeah, 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 like maybe 300. 300 subscribers, subscribers yeah. like Jacory, right, who's out here moving in social, 
bona fide social media influencer and shit. Got clout and weight out here, finding his stuff randomly with only three hundred, and then hitting the like button. Right? You never know who's watching. <laughs> Am I his Oprah? <laughs> you his Oprah? <laughs> well, 100%. You got to give him some money on it, though. Yeah, nah, give him a show. Nah, he'll give him put, put him on the channel. We interview him. He's a, nah, he, his, he is his Oprah. niche is not even close. He's it, not even close. Nah. We're going we to we get into the gaming space at some point, right? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like now, Maybe we need to talk about the niche. What kind of content was nah, it really? game. No, nah, it's gaming content. Yeah. What kind of games? You know what I mean? What are them games that pop up when you're in a weird site? No, no, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm ready to expose my gaming taste. You know what I'm saying? I ain't ready to be judged by the audience. I got you. Know, you. you know, but <laughs> no, nah, it was but it was some chill shit. Like okay. some chill, popular shit. It was okay. Probably not some shit people would think I'd be playing. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Part of the interruption, I have to take this quick commercial break to let you know that we are sponsored by me, because I signed myself. We signed ourselves. It's brand man network. That's why we're called no labels necessary, because no label, nobody else is necessary for us to get the train moving. So if you could just subscribe to show appreciation, we'd really appreciate that. Back to the program. Uh, fair, <laughs> fair enough. Well, one more thing when it comes to this YouTube. The niches are important today. Um, it's become a lot more like TikTok, right? And we probably should have mentioned this like out the gate when we, we saw these new views. But in, the com- in terms of the discoverability, Yes, we're talking about more like TikTok, but I'm talking about algorithmically how you're feeding your audience. You want to stay in a niche. You can't go as wide as you used to on YouTube. These variety channels, when you want to talk about anything, oh, I want to play tic-tac-toe and I want to like prank my friend and then I want to make music and then I want to do something, some commentary and reaction videos on the BET Awards or whatever. That doesn't mix on YouTube anymore. In the same way people say when you're on TikTok, you kind of want to stay in a pocket. Yeah. All right. When you start off, especially, you need to stay in a pocket. So, yeah, you might have your music and another thing, but you want to stay pretty linear because what's happening. And we even watch this with our data on our end for how our videos perform. When you the first people they're feeding to is your own audience. Right. Or people in similar space. And are, that are like the people who watch your last videos. Mm-hmm. So if we drop a video on Travis Scott, right? Like we have. But then we drop a video on BTS, the group people. See, our, our, our following might not even know who BTS <laughs> is, some people, right? Nah, I'm going to give them that. Right? that some about. people. I said yeah. some people. Okay, yeah. We literally watch them not perform. A lot of our, our, the people who watch us are more likely to click on a Travis Scott video and even though we have plenty of knowledge and plenty of game that can be extracted from the BTS group, people see that and they're not going to click. Yeah. And that's cool, right? But that's the that's how even within the same similar niche you would think, music advice or music marketing and all that stuff, you'll still not have the same level of activity. So it's something to be thought about. You have to make sure you keep serving your audience because if your audience doesn't click, it's not going to show to everybody else. And it's taking longer for videos to move and go viral. We will see it, uh, a video perform well within our audience and then slow down, click through rate drops. And then all of a sudden, the click through rate actually will go up a little bit sometimes and then start catching waves. It's like, oh, did it get pushed in a playlist or did it start getting mm-hmm. recommended in a next to a certain video? Mm-hmm. And YouTube's like, whoa, I love how it's interacting with this video. So we're going to keep showing it next to this video. All these things are happening on the back end and the algorithm. So again, stay in your niche. And then also if you, if you stay in your niche, even though it moves slowly, sometimes as long as your click through rate is right, your numbers are looking good in general, it'll probably show it to everybody else. But if you, your main audience is already watching, doesn't find interest in what you're doing. The chance of it going further than that is almost zero at this point. Yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking like I wonder how that's gonna impact artists who like to do more, let's say like discovery oriented content outside of their music content, right? Because I think it's like it, covers or something, or not covers. That's still music, but let's say like, let's say like vlogging or something, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, because like, I look at artists and music where or music with like the artists 
is the niche, right? The bigger they get, the more like they become the niche. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, and they can get away with it. But I'm thinking about those early artists who are building, who are like, hey, like my music is cool. I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go prank my manager so I can get a quick hundred k <laughs> views. Right? It's yeah. like that shit probably ain't gonna hit the same unless that shit is, is hilarious. You know, like Speed or somebody. You know or if the shit d- didn't work when you were doing your music. So if my music wasn't going crazy yet, yeah. the algorithm didn't fully say, "Oh yeah, put him over here." Yeah. But then my prank stuff going off, taking off, then becomes a problem. Yeah. Because now they're like, "Put him over there," and yeah. now I drop my music, and they put my music over there, and they're like, "Yo, what is this, dog? This ain't what I want from you, yeah. and it's not good." Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, please stop. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that whole thing, you will have to please stops, right? Please stops the comments. So. It's one of those things where you know how an artist will be afraid of having a hit that doesn't sound like the type of artist they want to be? Mm-hmm. And it's like, dang, that song blew up. I wish that song never blew up because mm-hmm. I really want to be on a, my artsy shit. That's what that is. Yeah. All right. It's like, dang, that prank video took off. And now I'm stuck in that space. When before, that was overblown. Because it's like, no, people aren't necessarily going to fully judge you in that way. And like, it's not like I can't take a prank video and good music. Mm-hmm. It's the algorithm is so specific that it's going to put you in that pocket where it's going to hyper specialize who it shows you to. And there's no chance of, of who it should. If there's no chance of who sees it being based off of the music itself right Mm -hmm. i always like to use the cats and dogs example right it's like if something pops up in the cat cat cart cart, in the cat category now they're going to show my dog content to the cat people yeah versus saying this video is about dogs let's try to show it to dog people it's not going to do that at all and of course you could have overlap but you're not getting the full merit because there are a lot of people who are like, nah, I just want this. And I just ro- watch these pranks. I don't even like that style of music. All right. Which is the bigger issue. Yeah. It's like now you got all these people who know you and love you. We had one girl that was trying to work with us. She had a, a boyfriend that had uh, a, a sad instance happened to him in his life, a tra- tragic event. She did a fundraiser and that fundraiser on TikTok, right, brought in people of all shapes and sizes and ages and genders and whatever background, right? Mm -hmm. That's great. Probably went up a couple hundred thousand followers, raised a lot of legitimate money, got hella engagement, but then she drops her music. No, this old white man is not going to listen to your young white girl teenage issue music yeah you get what i'm saying yeah all right this old black lady probably can't relate to it yeah. the same right this, this kid don't even know what the fuck going on this kid <laughs> exactly <laughs> just lost to the sauce out here <laughs> clicking like just because and swiping so <laughs> the algorithm sensitivity in these platforms is a pro and con because it's what allows you to go viral so fast but it also is what comes back to bite you if you go viral so fast in the wrong way yeah, you know. Yeah, and you you said something too that I I didn't I hadn't thought about it. I, I should have peeped it a couple of days ago, but I hadn't thought about it. But the variety channels are gonna die off on YouTube. And what makes me think yeah. of that is there's a YouTuber that really early on in my marketing career, so pay to do like reactions for people on like YouTube, like for clients and stuff. And he emailed me a couple of days ago and was like, he's running a deal, which honestly should have been the first red flag, but you know whatever. He's running a <laughs> special. Yeah something crazy but like ten dollars a post or something i'm like oh let me go look at it because we got somebody we want to work with now and it's trying to just like dead and so i'm looking at it and it's like the last video is like a music reaction video the game before the video before is like a vlog the video before is like a gaming video the video before that he's reacting to like movie trailers right the video before that he's reacting mm-hmm. to like tv show clips i'm like bro like you know 2018 2019 he was deep in the music space and my guess is that i do remember there was a point where maybe 20 20, 20, 20 more, like reaction channels really blew up. You know, yeah. like, well, not even just music reaction, but like just other niche reaction channels that like, really started taking off. I would right. say around then. My guess is he saw that. was like, oh, I don't have to just react to this new Kodak Black video. I can react to the new 
Black Panther trailer coming out and, you know, ride that in the algorithm. And, you know, now he's probably stuck in the loop where it's like, oh, this is all I know how to do because it worked for me. But like you said, now YouTube is like, no, nah, you got to go back to being niche. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At least until your, because it's like I said earlier, like with artists, the bigger you become, like you become the niche. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, and I think YouTube is, really all social platforms are interesting where like they pick up on that. Like you have enough social influence to where it don't, it kind of don't matter what the fuck you post. You know what I'm saying? It's going mm -hmm. to do well. Right, but that comes with the grinding in whatever your previous niche was or whatever your initial niche is, right? And so I'm just thinking like, yeah, you're right, bro. Like I'm thinking about like all the variety YouTubers I used to pay attention to, other than maybe Mr. Beast, you know what I'm saying? But going back, he has the notoriety so he yeah, can do whatever the fuck he wants to do. You know what I'm saying? It's like all the variety YouTubers I used to pay attention to, I don't even really see them getting recommended to me anymore. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Pushing me. Like I have to like actively think about them which I'm not actively thinking about a lot of them, you know what I'm saying, and go look for them, right. which I'm also not looking for a lot of them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and yeah, but it like literally clicked as soon as you said it. It's like, damn, bro, the variety YouTuber, bro, the, I'm just going to do whatever because like, this is what I kind of feel like YouTuber, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, they got a long road ahead of them. Yeah, and the tough part is it's not just I, I'm going to do whatever because that's what I feel like. At a time, people were just doing whatever because they thought it would give them a higher chance of going viral. Mm-hmm. Right, people were doing that at TikTok on a t at one time. Yeah. Whatever trend is happening, just do it. That was the advice. Yeah. Right, so you can get views, not knowing that they were going down a dead end. Right, because now you're trapping yourself if you take get, take off in this space algorithmically. All right, and now you can't do whatever you really want to do. Oh, what'd you say, Sharante did? What what kind of channel was it? Oh, bro, he uh, <laughs> what did he do? He stuck his finger in wax and it just like hardened on his finger and that shit got like a million views on TikTok. <laughs> Crazy, bro. Random, most random video ever. But he was attracting like, I don't know, I guess wax enthusiasts. I don't know what kind of weird shit people yeah, were into. Bro, that's that a that fetish, shit, bro. Yeah, <laughs> something, bro, because that shit was like, we were shocked. Oh, this shit hit 2,000 views. That's cool. You know, a day later, damn, that shit had 100K. Like a week later, like, damn, that shit had a million views, bro. Like, what the fuck? Like, why are all these people coming here? And I think he still has the followers. I think they got his account to maybe like 10,000, maybe 12,000 or something. But yeah. he switched it to like a, a business account. And like, yeah, the engagement isn't the same way. Because everybody's like, nah, I, think I want those. <laughs> I want those finger in the wax videos, bro. <laughs> like, <what you? laughs> like, I don't care about nothing else, but stick your finger back in that wax. <laughs> Yo. That's tough, man. Oh, that's man. tough. Now, now imagine that, bro. That's like an extremity of <laughs> someone taking off in the wrong way, yeah. and they're like, "No, but I'm so talented." And they're like, "Nah, bro. Nah. Put your finger in that wax, though." <laughs> <laughs> but I got great music. There's so many things to talk about. <laughs> I play nah. instruments. <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> nah, nah. Put that finger in that wax. <laughs> I'm sorry, saying that shit to people, bro. Hey, bro, you just need to put the finger in the wax, bro. You're making it too complicated, bro. Just put your finger in the wax. Hey, facts, bro. <laughs> hey, new saying, for real. <laughs> Yo, that but that's literally a real live example of how this shit is working now. Yeah. And that's mind-blowing for a lot of people because that train chasing era in that way is over. You know, but like you said, you get to the point where you are the niche, you are big enough, you still can expand, but now you have to be specific, then expand. And how do you know if you're on that level yet? I guess you got to drop a video and find out, right? Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. The build an audience to, to get there, bro. Because, like, you know, like I said, but like once you have the audience, they care about everything you do. Yeah. So it allows you to branch off like that. But it's like yep. nobody's paying attention to you. Play the niche game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Play the niche game until you realize. I, I always tell artists, bro, like, 
do the niche until somebody asks you about your personal life and other mm-hmm. stuff. Like, hey, man, I know that you got a, I don't know, Madden posting about you play Madden. Now maybe you can start thinking about doing the game and content, right? Because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, there are people in my audience who are interested in me and what I do. Yeah. Now I can deviate a little bit, bro. If all yeah. people are asking about is your music, and all they care about is the music, and they don't care about your personal life yet, it's, it's not time to do yeah. outside niche content. True. True. Yeah, you can look at some of these channels that have all these interviews with random people, mm-hmm. and they still got a lot of views. It's like, oh yeah, they hit that point where mm-hmm. people just care about who they're talking to. They don't care who Joe Rogan, right? There's a level of trust with his core audience that if he's interviewing them, then they must be valuable to listen to. Yeah. And he does so many, you're probably not going to listen to all of them, but there'll at least be a level of respect and potential um, attention that you give an interview for somebody if you are one of his viewers that he's interviewing. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, I wonder what this doctor has to say, say, because it's more about Joe's interest and he's technically a curator at that point. Mm -hmm. All right. So you essentially want to become a trusted curator. That's what somebody with a lot of fans is. You have, well, it's levels, right? You, it's probably a new way of looking at the fans, actually, right? You have your fans that are just fanatics. They're sheep, right? Yep. That's that core, core. They're blind. They're going to follow you no matter what you do. Every sense of hypocrisy and contradiction is actually somebody just not understanding, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the sheep level. And then you got, oh, I really trust the decisions that this person makes, right? And I like the, whether that's decisions they make in their music, right? It happens to connect with mm-hmm. me a lot or the cons- decisions they make with their fashion. So it represents a lifestyle that I like to opt into a lot or whatever. And I, and I feel like I'm trusting their choices and however they present themselves, I expect it to be a way that puts me on to something that that I like, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's a level of fan that that's not just, again, blind faith, but it's still a level of trust, yeah. right? And when you have that with a lot of people, because you can only get with so many of the blind um, a- aspect of it, that's like the bottom of the bottom of the funnel. When you have a lot of those people who at least kind of just trust your opinion and approach to things, that's when you start seeing people like blow up on a whole nother cultural level because no matter what they do, like you said, people are going to follow. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, what is he doing? And by the way, it doesn't mean, oh, whoever he's interviewing, I'm going to check him out because now I'm, he's giving some credence to that. And this, But that is the importance of like brand association because then people say, oh, now you're giving recognition to something that's bad, whatever. Mm-hmm. The other aspect of it is I trust this person to be interesting, right? So their curation of their life is interesting. So when you look at a vlog, this person might not be somebody who's interviewing somebody making musical musical selections. It's just like I trust them to be entertaining and however they they move is going to be entertaining. So yeah. no matter whatever video they do, I feel like I'm going to be entertained by yeah. that or feel the emotion that I like might be inspirational. I might go to this person for, you know, happiness. I might go for this person for sadness, whatever it is. So that's what you kind of want to look at yourself as at scale, like just a straight up curator, you know? Um, and how, I don't even want to put people in overthinking, right? Not saying how can you make your decisions matter, but understand your decisions matter to the people who are following you and then figure out why those decisions matter. Like which part of it, like is it rooted in the music side of things? Do they also like your fashion decisions? Do they also like um, your lifestyle decisions? Or do you have an audience who's like, hey, singing, shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's real. That's a real thing, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. play basketball, dog. You know, like I know people hate that, but like, yeah. it's like that's, that's, some people just have that. You can build something else. But you have to be cognizant. Nah, they just want to hear me from this. Yeah, and it's like, why? Because you like you start talking all this other stuff, and they're like, wait, why? Why is he doing this? He's 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 off script. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. You know what I mean? Which, on one part, I understand the rock and the hard place that NFL was dealing with when the Kali Kaepernick situation happened, mm. because you know we have this weird thing in the country where you know everybody's in their bubbles. 
and they think it's all them. But let's just split it into like the left and the right, because that's how we typically do things in America, right? The left and the right, the far right, the far left. All right. So there are a lot of people on the left that are like, ah, let's boycott the NFL. They don't F with it. They don't mess with the NFL at this moment. And when they see the views tanking, oh, it's because of us, right? Mm. Without being aware that there's people on the right who are saying the same thing. Yeah. I don't mess with the NFL. We're boycotting. And that's the rock and the hard place because both sides looked at the NFL as pandering to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, dang, that's a crazy position to be <laughs> It was like, they really didn't know what to do. Oh, maybe we can hire a rapper. <laughs> Put JV on the board and try to figure this shit out. But yeah, you, know, you got these people that feel like they're disrespectful because you're letting people kneel, and you got these other people who feel like this person should be able to play. Da, da. It was a, it was a tough place. No matter how you feel about it, like that's a really really tough place as a business to be on. Both of your sides of your fan base are mad, and they both feel like they're, you're pandering to the other side. Yeah, like, and in a sense, they both right in one way or another. And right? they're both right <laughs> in one way or another. Like that's PR nightmare. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is a PR nightmare. So, you know, being cognizant, and that's why I try to tell people, we go back to the curation. Those sports, they don't care that much about these social causes. One way or another. The one that panders to the left, one that panders to the right. They care about the money. Yeah. And keeping the sport. Because every time they start to get outside that box, they risk People coming at them for one reason or another, right? And creating that type of situation. And we're not built to deal with this. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're built to curate the sport. Yeah. And that's the primary thing. So, you know, this ain't isn't to get too political or anything like that. But, like, we look at the Kyle Kaepernick situation and he got booted from the league. People don't remember years before that you had a white man. Tim T- D- T- Tim Tebow, who was ultra Jesus out. Him, bro. Yeah, probably, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like he was on some ultra Jesus Christian, yeah. all of that stuff, right? In terms of his his speech and um his rhetoric. And he got pushed out of the league because they considered him a distraction mm-hmm. for that and the 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 amount of people, the media, the level of media that followed him, basically. Mm-hmm. All right. And in, in sports, you basically have to be like undeniably almost like top of the top to create any media uproar and, and the team deal with you. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, you got to be LeBron or J- Jordan of your day, Tom Brady, like Floyd Mayweather. You have to be somewhere around that sphere. But if you're below that, right or wrong, <laughs> it's not about right or wrong. It's just like, I don't know, man. It's too much for me. We, we don't want to do it all this. You, you distraction. That's just the way those those sports are are. But it's because of that very reason, right? Yeah. Like yeah. understanding this is what we curate. This is how people come to to us. Why they come to us. And I know that's a dated way because today we want people to actually be. Well, I'm kind of not one of those people that I necessarily want people to be make clear everything they believe. But like generally speaking, the public today. They want you, an artist. They want to know what you believe. Yeah, they want you to draw a line. The they sign. want you to draw a line, yeah. like in the sand yeah. somewhere. Yeah. yeah, they don't. They don't even want to hear nuance. They want no. They want to know you got a, a line here, and you don't mess with this person. I don't mess with that person, so we can kind of like take a stand together, which is tough. But I always find like sports being the clearest place to like mark the example on, like just the way the PR game is set up today, and it, it's hard to actually just curate what you do and stay in that pocket which is funny though a lot of people want to get out of that pocket of course like as an artist i want to talk about and expand and talk more mm-hmm. besides myself it's difficult to get out that pocket but then when you get big enough you force into it. you force into that pocket <laughs> yeah. right so and, and, and then you're dealing with the bad side of it so you know just uh uh <laughs> some of the, the 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 many random things that are that should be considered when it comes to not only the niches for YouTube but how it relates to your PR and I got to talk about Rumble because that's also YouTube related as people have been asking for weeks about Rumble 
So I want to do this short because I honestly feel like it's not a lot to talk about, but it is worth touching on. Yeah, break it down. So Rumble is the other YouTube for y'all who do not know. Speaking of like left, right, why is Rumble something that exists? In shorthand, it's looked at as like the right wing YouTube, right? Um, a lot of people who are on that side of the fence and they're for free speech, da 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 da. Rumble is powered by that side of the fence. But for, from the start, it could outgrow that, but like, that's just kind of the energy it was started with, right? I'm about to share the screen. Those who can't see, you know, you're just listening on. Do you but, want to talk? No, it's fine. You know, <laughs> you go on there and it, I mean, it's like I said, it's scary. It looks like a lot of stuff that I don't like to watch, like a lot of super news. Um, hardcore ban TikTok again? Yeah, banning TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> all that type of stuff. Like, and why you're banning TikTok? And we're going to war in this country versus the other country. Um, there's some brutal humil- humiliation. A lot of uh, what gender wars? Mm-hmm. Everything. We're all, all a polarizing conversation. A lot of that stuff is here, right? Now, why is that important to to touch on? It's not a place where I see for music, honestly, at mm-hmm. the moment. Like and because people were asking for the context of music, should I try to get on Rumble? It's early. It's a platform. So here are the rules. One, when a platform is early, and you're early in your career, you can't just assume, oh, I'm gonna grow with the platform. I'm gonna be early, and I'm gonna make it to the top of the platform. And then as other people come on, I'm gonna be at the top of the game, and everybody's gonna show me love, and that's how I'm gonna grow and blow up. It sounds good, and a lot of people look at that first mover. Uh, advantage as a justification to hop on these platforms, but there's a few things to consider. One, it doesn't even make sense for you to be on that platform in the context of what people are there to consume. When I'm looking at Rumble right now, just going through the pages, a lot of it is based on like news, commentary, like talking head type stuff, which is cool, but that's not music. So people aren't there in the mindset of I'm going to consume music yet. Mm-hmm. All right. So if you can somehow work your way in to commentary with music. Yeah. I was, yeah. Eh. You have to be like a special type of artist. Yeah. You got to be a special a, type of yeah. artist. Right. You yeah. you might be conscious in the way that this platform, their consumers think of conscious. Right. Yeah. Talking on all those issues in that way. Maybe you do that. Or maybe you just look at it like I'm going to plug my music in between those shows i'm going to hit up all the people on this platform and see if i can get my music to to be a part of their intro or backtrack or whatever something like that so do you belong in this platform what do people consume on this platform if they're not there for you or some version of you eh that's pretty tough right another thing to consider will this platform even be a long, round long <sighs> That's a, that's a huge thing to think about. Yeah, I, right? I, yeah, I think it is. I ain't gonna lie. Rumble, yeah. I think so. Yeah, right. But oh, just platforms in general. I'm just talking yeah, in okay, general, gotcha, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Because people ask is every time there's a new yeah. platform that pops. Yeah, right. They did that with uh, Triller, right? Oh, I, I, about Triller. I knew Triller wasn't gonna be around. I was trying to tell people, but and we can kind of go into even some of the house because it relates to this conversation. But is the platform going to be around long? Well, it's hard to make that analysis if you don't know what to look for. All right. Now, people kind of felt that way about TikTok. And some people felt that way about um, Triller. They're like, oh, well, TikTok's not going to be that around that long. I don't know about this new thing. Triller's going to be around. Look at all these investments that keep happening. Look at all these brand deals they keep happening and da da da. And all yeah. these artists keep posting on it. So the industry. Like is like, oh man, Kendrick Lamar is involved and all these other artists and these artists that get paid to post on there. They keep seeing these faces thinking that that actually means something. That mm-hmm. doesn't mean something. I know that there's this, this idea of clout and what clout can do. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to technology and even brands, but especially technology, clout does not have the level of equity that you would think it does. In terms of something popping and lasting, you might get a little bit of initial um, attention, but change behavior, nah, it's, it's not as real as you would think it would or as we would love it to be. All right. 
So don't just think you can get a bunch of influencers and then blow a brand up. It's not how it works. Um, and I don't even mean like random influencers. I'm talking about like Kevin Hart, fucking, yeah. you know, The Rock, Uzi. whatever, Uzi, yeah. whoever, right? It can happen. It can 100% happen, but there's more to it. You have to look at the actual platform, not just the influencers, because the influencers, if right in the right audience and da, 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 it can make the initial attention happen, but translating that into something lasting is different. So if you look at Triller, technologically, they were behind TikTok on just the user experience, mm -hmm. right? Me consuming the things that are going to make me stay on the platform and keep me interested on the platform. They are behind. Also, the growth of TikTok happened so fast. They were so aggressive to get to so many users. You have the network effect. Once you get past a certain threshold of users, one, it has greater utility, meaning it's more useful, right? If there's only one person with a cell phone, it ain't that meaningful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You got a thousand people with a cell phone. Okay. You got a hundred thousand people with a cell phone. Now you're like literally changing behavior and the way the world can interact. TikTok took off. They got to that way faster than Triller. Triller actually never fully um, got to that and what you needed in today's um world because you also have to consider it's not just oh i got 20 million users that would have been great back in the day but now you got 20 million users when facebook already has a billion yeah type thing so you know you're talking about transitioning people from other platforms or telling them to make more time so that becomes less um like if, if, if a platform can hit that number that threshold and this, it varies depending on what you're looking at but if a platform can hit the network effects then not only is it more useful, meaning people will probably stay on, that means legitimate culture can start being established. And when culture is being established and you have certain behaviors that pertain specifically to that platform, we talked about it the other day. Mm -hmm. YouTube shorts, great. It's probably going to do well because people are already, had, are already on YouTube. So you just have to you know, change your behavior a little bit. If you can get it to move, it can move. But that culture is not going to evolve into what TikTok's culture is going to mm -hmm. be. Yep. So when people want the TikTok culture, they're going to go to TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, you can open a new club in town, right? But I'm going to go to you when I want the EDM vibe and I, you're not going to kill this, like, I don't know, street underground vibe. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just a two, it's two different energies. So I go to you for different things, right? Hang out with different friends for different interest that's all it is like these platforms are literally people's friends that's kind of how mm -hmm. you might as well yeah. think of it yeah all right and then also when you look at the network effect in terms of the amount of people you want to look at soundcloud as well or i knew soundcloud wasn't going to just disappear you remember when that happened if you were yeah. like soundcloud gonna die completely dead, yeah yeah, yeah now, like, that's been a minute this uh, that well, almost, well, like 2018 or something? I can't, like honestly or? i can't believe i actually just randomly remembered that like I pulled it out of there. Oh, I, I hate trying to beat. I ain't thought about that. Like, the same thing with Snapchat. Time. It was the same right. thing with Snapchat. Snapchat yeah. too. It was, right? right? So that's perfect. The reason those have still stood the test of time is because you got to so many people. And when you have that many people on a the platform, these companies ain't about to just let that many users die. Right? Yeah. Like that's a lot of data. But even MySpace was still My around, bro. Like, <laughs> like, even MySpace, MySpace was still, still kicking, around. bro. Yeah. So it's still useful yeah. to from an investor and business side. It's hard to just let that go. Yeah. It's very likely that you're gonna find some more money. You yeah. know, like, oh, they say money's a problem. They'll probably find some more money. The founder might not like how much comes with that money. Right, the the terms of that money, but there's gonna be some more money to be found. Yeah, or they're just gonna sell the data. Or they just gonna they sell the data. They always got the data to flip, bro. They they, got exactly, exactly, <laughs> and that's a part of all of them at this point. So, if it but if it doesn't have these things at the moment, then how can you make that make be sure that it's gonna um, stay on? Then you have to start looking at the likelihood that a platform will be around based off of. Maybe the need in the marketplace, like opportunities in the marketplace. And I say all these things because like artists are truly making their career decisions off of this. And you're gonna dedicate a whole year to a platform and then ain't shit ever happen. Like people did that with uh what was the other one? I thought she was about to say triller again, but um Triller. No, I, 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 I was gonna say the other triller, but 
then I said, then I was like, no, nah, it was like Chiller. Uh, I think it was, it was like a star with like a V or something. Dub Smash or something. Oh, shit. I forgot about yes. Dub Smash. Dub Smash. But that just unlocked a part of my brain that had just been dormant. That shit was crazy. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It happened. It'd be blips of time yeah. and people would be so excited about like this stuff. Like a fun summer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a fun summer. Not a one night stand, but it was a fun <laughs> summer. It was a fun summer. Which, real quick digression. Did you know, know that DC Young Fly blew up on Vine? Yeah, yeah, I was there, but I watched that shit. I didn't up. realize it was yeah. Vine where he blew up. Yeah. I probably I was seeing the videos when he blew up, but I didn't realize I was watching it on Vine. It was like one of the things you just yeah kind of start to see him everywhere. Now you don't remember where you discovered. It. I didn't yeah. know it was Vine. It was a lot of them like him, Caleb. I don't know if you know Caleb City. Yeah, Caleb City up on there, and then it was one more big one. Oh, King Batch, yeah, all them. All them I knew King Batch yeah. was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Him, I remember his uh, his girl that blew up on Vine too. But yeah, so those um like all that stuff. You want to really think through before you like just put your career out there on the platform. Like you might dip your toe on it, but it's better for a newer artist to just learn the platforms that are sure, and then take some chances on new platforms. Unless you literally have nothing going on on the current platform yeah. that you're on. Yeah. So now it's like, hey, let me just risk it all for a moment. Try this for three, four months, and then what factors? are worth taking that risk. Well, when you see something like what TikTok was doing, the discoverability and people going viral so fast, now it's like, oh, this is a new platform, but hey, it's getting people found. Like yeah. for real, for real. Not this, oh, if I dedicate myself to it for long enough and I'm going to slowly become big and then all of a sudden... um, all of, all of a sudden, you know, as the platform gets bigger, where I'm going to get bigger. It's like, no, this moment is happening now. TikTok is a king maker, queen maker, or at least like viral moment maker now. I got to take advantage of this now. And that's what happened early on with TikTok. So you had people dedicating and it worth, was worth that time, especially the amount of time that you had to invest to get that viral moment was such a contraction versus how much it took on other platforms. Yeah. It was worth it to at least see. Right. So if you have any signs of discoverability on a platform like that, then it's worth going to take that risk. But not just, oh, this is a platform that's building up and you know, people are doing well, they like it. Not not all that. Not you like you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about your career. You don't yeah. care about these fucking platforms. These platforms are only a vehicle for you to get yourself out there and communicate your message and then bring home some money through the platform, you know, and send out that attention. Let the content be a little army that collects people, <laughs> throws them in the bag, yeah. brings them to your cash register, cashes out, <laughs> yeah. you know, goes into your your listening farm, listens to your music, and then puts them back into the universe, right? That's how that's what you're there for. Platforms are only your way of doing it. So don't get too married to any of the platforms. And when you make decisions on, for platforms, use some of the principles that we just went through. Yeah, I feel like ours got a kind of a plot of, what is it, the, uh, the Pareto's principle? The 80-20? The 80-20, right? Yeah. That's, I look at it because like, you, you already kind of touched on it, but there are certain platforms that in today moving forward, but we know are not, more than likely not going anywhere, right? Like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, I would throw TikTok in there now. Like these are platforms where like it would take a lot for them to die off. Oh, okay. You mean going like not dying out? Yeah, not okay. dying off. Yeah, okay, not yeah. like not going. Yeah, yeah. So not dying <laughs> off, right? Like, so like, so like, these become like the safe bets, right? Hey, I may not be able to grow as fast on here as maybe this new thing, but rest assured, if I put the work in, like something will come from it, right? Because the foundation has already been laid. So I, I, because I do think there's that that delicate balance, but especially in music between right, like. How do you make sure you don't miss out on the next thing? Because we know music changes every time a damn near new app drops. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. and then all it takes is the right app to completely change the culture and shift it, right? We, we saw that with TikTok. TikTok's probably the most recent, I would say, to show us that, right? So I think everything you said is, is like is, is true in that. And I know like even outside of that, one of the biggest things, or two of the biggest things I look at before like fully investing in a, in a new platform is one. Are there people I know in real life talking about it? Mm. Right? Because yep. like you said, like it'll, and a Kevin Hart post ain't going to get me over there, bro. I know Kevin Hart got a bag. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm not yes. stupid, right? But if I, I see like, oh, my 
my little sister and like her friends are on it, right? And I'm like, oh shit, that's the app I just heard about. Like, then they're using mm-hmm. it, like, you know, my roommates bring it up or something. Like, it, it makes it more real for me. Right? I can I can see the people that are on it, and then based on that, decide if I need to be there. Right? If my grandma told me about a new app. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But like my my <laughs> Wait, why not your grandma? That's a real person. My grandma ain't my target demographic. She's not your all right. That's a, not your <laughs> target demographic. But it can be yeah. a symbol of how big and real the conversation. Okay, that's fair. That's like fair. she's talking about you like, dang, how did she hear about that? Yeah, that's right? fair. That's fair. You know, it's still yeah. like a it's a pretty strong indicator that there's something to brew. I'll say yeah. that. It's something it might not be the decision maker. You know, it's something to brew. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, I think my grandma actually does watch. Watching what? Yeah. She watched a couple man. of our videos. So. See, I thought about this the other day, man. I said I gotta stop cursing so much in these videos. <laughs> My grandma know what's up, bro. Yeah. You know, you know, grandma, you know what's up. Hey, bro, you know, I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear this now, grandma, you know what's up. <laughs> hey, man, I'm, 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 I'm still, you know, like got got a little bit of that old southern with me, where it's like, all right, yeah, you can know I curse, but I'm probably not cursing a whole bunch around you. No, nah, bro, it's I need just, them. It's just I need not them as know. comfortable. They know, bro. They know you need them to know. Yeah, I need. Mean, oh, you lean into the curse. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. <laughs> 100%, bro. I mean, I ain't not in a disrespect, but I was like, hey, grandma, this ain't directed at you. But I need you to know this is the type of lifestyle your grandson be living <laughs> when he's not home for Thanksgiving dinner. You know what I'm saying? I don't want a lot of my grandma. You know what I'm saying? I like her. I love her too much for that, you know? See, <laughs> my, my grandma can get with that, but she can't. My mom can't. That's that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah. my mom like nah. She, she she ain't having none of that, bro. Like you the devil. <laughs> that's that, that's damn near what it's gonna yeah. be. Yeah. Uh, oh shit! And I, to the second point too, because you just touched on it a little bit. The second thing I look at before the sign for platform is worth investing in is how many conversations get created around that platform right like how much is it being talked about because mm-hmm. to go back to the, your point about tiktok and triller one of the biggest things i think that tiktok had over triller was they were a conversation starter mm-hmm. you go back to 2018 2019 that was you know first it was like Lil Nas x and then arizona service we started the whole conversation of oh shit is tiktok going to be this new thing for the music right that's a whole that's a conversation being started right and then we go into is this safe for kids that was that whole debate right and just mm-hmm. the content being pushed on there then there was the China, you know, some of the, the not China thing, but Trump, China banned it, right? It was like all yep. these different conversations popping up around the app that let you know, like, hey, this is this is way more relevant outside of just the app store and even the people that are using it. Yep. And if we know anything about people, is that eventually curiosity kicks in. And if you keep hearing about something, whether good or bad, eventually a part of you wants to go check it out, which means that, which is basically the funnel. Right. And then we know eventually those people are going to convert. And then it goes back to all things you said, like, is the user experience cool? Do we feel like it replaces something that we, you know, or not replace, but does it fill a gap that we don't already have? Right. But mm-hmm. that these things drive people to the point where they even get to make that decision. And like Triller didn't have any of that. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that, that, maybe outside of like the only real conversation I remember around Triller at that time was when someone was saying they were like botting traffic on the platform, right? That became like a whole thing, which is a terrible conversation to start off with (laughs) (laughs) as a a newer platform, right? It's a terrible conversation. But TikTok had like so many like polarizing narratives hitting at the same time. I remember like Twitter was the same way when it first came out. Facebook was the same way when it first came out. YouTube was like that when it came out. Like they it, it started all these like real world conversations and you could see it like pushing certain buttons in real life. That just like I said, anybody that understands, I think people, you know that eventually, bro, people are gonna stick with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause polarizing conversation creates people that really stand for it and people that hate it. And that to me is one of the things that makes a, a good platform kind of stick is that polarity of it. Like you need people that to, to shit on it. You just don't want an overwhelming amount of people shitting on it. You know what I'm saying? Just enough just enough that right. it's spicy, you know what I'm saying? But not enough that that shit runs everybody away from it. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So I look at those as like all the things you said. Is there somebody in real life I know using it and then do those people represent the demographic I'm looking for? Or like you said, or do they even represent that this thing is ascended beyond just the niche that it's even targeting? And then, bro, like what is being talked? Is that platform even being talked about? Not just in terms of like mm-hmm. users and usability, but like what are the actual conversations being started because this app is in the marketplace? Because people only make conversations around things they think are important or can make an impact. If it's neither of those things, then we don't talk about it. You know what I'm saying? At least not not general consumers, but like, you know, like news outlets and kind of like the public as a whole. So that that's always like led me in the right direction. The only time it failed me 
There was this app in college called Yik Yak that was pretty crazy. I thought it was going to blow up. I don't know if oh, you remember yeah, Yik Yak. Yeah, Yik Yak, yeah. I thought Yik Yak was going to be crazy. That shit Those died guys, on It was something that I was... They like sold it or something. I had in relation to it. Either I knew... Uh, the founders were in one of my programs. It was something like something close to the cuff where I was around it a lot. An accelerator or something I used to go to or something. I don't know. They had all these companies. And that was a dope app concept. <laughs> the thing that pushed them over the edge, though, I believe was it was all the bullying and stuff that mm -hmm. was occurring mm -hmm. and they, they got hit with that kind of issue too early yeah exactly ne too negative of a conversation too, too early negative. Yeah. yeah but you know one thing that you said that i want to kind of like codify for people because you were kind of touching on it where you talked about your grandma or like little sister talking about something it's about not just people in your real life but people that are out of your bubble in music, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a very important Specifically. distinction. Yeah. Because yeah. Triller seemed really big to people who yeah. are in music. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you hear a lot of people talking about it, but it wasn't touching the real life, the regular people. The same way when I would talk about like industry plans, I'm like, go ask your regular like person, like your sister, your brother, mm -hmm. or like, who that's not in music, what an industry plan is. And most people had never heard of mm -hmm. something like that, right? Like that's how you can really gauge the relevance of a lot of these things. Cause you want to, I don't want to say real people. Cause you know, being in the music industry, you are a real person, but you lose some of your real personhood in terms of market accuracy in terms of how you judge shit. Yeah. Right. Like you yeah. can't gauge another music person's like something's quality off of another music person. Cause they just, they're as much in the sauce as you are. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's that. And then, the last thing is the company's decision making process. If you look at their moves, now you have to have a little bit more of a complex understanding of business, probably to truly get it. But when Triller did the boxing match, I said, oh shit, this is horrible. It's over for Triller. All right. And that was a big moment to people when they sponsored a bo boxing match. But just coming from tech, I'm like, this makes no sense for them to do. Like, this is a, a reach, hmm. right? This is like, I'm dying, and we trying to find some, 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 some oxygen. When they purchased Versus, I said, oh shit, Tr Tw uh, Triller is still fucked, <laughs> all right? Because what it looked like was, we don't know who we are anymore. Hmm. Like we're lo we are losing this TikTok battle for just the pure tech and what that looks like. So we're trying to figure out another form of monetization to make this business viable and attractive, at least on the back end, how investors might be looking at it, things like that. Right. So, you know, like I said, it might be a little bit more difficult to just call that out with businesses. But in contrast, I see TikTok create an ad platform, right? Where you can create run ads for yourself as a regular consumer or uh, or personal user, just like you can do on Facebook. Oh, that's investing in the right direction. I saw them make moves where the creator funds, you see them mm -hmm. do things like um, they had this platform where you could try to search their they're influencers on oh, the platform, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. The, the the creator marketplace or whatever yeah. it was called, right? And I think that's still around. It was poorly done, and I didn't think that was gonna last because I had seen so many people try to do it, and it just it's a hard, hard thing to figure out. Um, but at least their thinking is somewhere in the sphere of what they were already selling, right? What is another move that that TikTok did? So, so even them just highlighting trends on the platform, like TikTok showed that hey we are a platform that pay attention to our creators and we're yes. willing to give them the spotlight yes yeah everything was investing back in that core mm. where triller was just like cold music industry tool yeah it was a, it was a music <laughs> industry tool and they were yeah. making music industry moves yeah right yeah. um and it doesn't <laughs> nah, nah 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 but yeah it doesn't do what you needed to do I'm going to go ahead and switch subjects. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We got next, man. What's up next? <laughs> um, well, do you think Drake is ever going to get married? 
Yeah. Yes? Yeah, I think so. Why do you think that? I feel like that's what he really wants deep down inside. Deep and down. He's not going to stop his search for uh, a greatness and, and, and his pursuit in that until – Mm. You know that that comes along. Maybe that's the hole he's trying to fill with all the Grammys. That's the hole he's trying to fill. Ooh, yeah, the I hole he's trying to fill. With the Grammys. I don't want this jewelry, baby. Yeah, I don't really want these hits and I, these. I don't want these hits. Billions of streams. I don't want to be out here competing with Bad Bunny. I want to be at home with you. Mm. 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 Stressful out here competing against Bad. But Taylor what? Swift just dropped a couple weeks ago. <sighs> I don't want to deal with that. Come on. I don't want to deal with these problems. <laughs> we we we, and we gonna talk about Bad Bunny too. Good, great segue. Now. <laughs> <laughs> because there's this post on Shade Room, right? Drake has a new piece of ice called Previous Engagement. And it's made up of, of by ice, I mean jury for those of y'all who are just listening, right? <laughs> previous, and he calls it period, Previous Engagements. And it's made up of 42 diamonds representing all of the times he thought about popping a question. Hmm. So these are all the times he thought about saying, Will you marry me? 42 times. That's a lot. Maybe 42 women. I don't know. Maybe some of those women got a two-piece. They might have been two of those <laughs> thoughts that occurred, right? 42 times, but apparently he never popped the question. But I thought about it. And now he wants to credit himself by putting it on the piece. Now, why do you think this is out? Because we already know, right? We're in the industry. If we see it, it's because there's a point. There's a point. There's, there's a purpose. A point. Yeah. There's a purpose behind yeah. it. Yeah. What do you think that is? Uh, this is the post rollout. No, this is this is. Uh, I'm trying to think. When's the last big Drake moment we had? It's probably been at least two, three weeks ago. That's too long in the news cycle to go without being talked about. One. You know, How many like, weeks? Like two, three weeks for someone like Drake. That's way too long. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like nah, something got to start going. <laughs> so it's that right. Let's let's reinvigorate the news cycle. And I remember talking about it on an older episode. Where I said that you'll start to see bigger artists do these things that sometimes create conversations that have nothing to do with the core thing. Yeah. So like actually right before we start shooting this episode, I was on Twitter and there's a whole debate because of this about um like why men aren't considered horrors and certain things, right? And it all stemmed from like this, like this thing. And I'm like, that's really that's, yeah, this is crazy. But a tweet's going that tweet was going up. It had like twenty thousand retweets wow. when I saw it. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know if this is a conversation that Drake was trying to start, right? That whole that whole conversation. Mm-hmm. But he did. And it's gonna be talked about for the next couple of days and probably shoot off into some subset conversations that we all gonna just point back at Drake. Mm. Right. And so I think it's that like I need a conversation. This is something that's outlandish. Like the narrative behind it is crazy, right? It's not like he just went in like, oh, I got another $10 million chain. It's like, no, this is a chain with with value. It is expensive and there's meaning behind it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a two piece with that. And it's on brand, bro. Like Drake is the, you know, Drake is notorious for sticking with the, for lack of a better term, like the simp narrative. You know what I'm saying? Like that's mm. been his bread and butter for years. And if we tie it back to the album, you know, Her Loss, what I was telling you before we started shooting is, I think this is a message to all those women, right? Like, like all this money I would have, I was willing to spend on you mm. and invest in you and I had to go buy this dumb ass necklace because you turned me down. Damn. You could have had this. You right? could have had this. Her loss. Her loss. So I think it's, I think it's a, a dope uh, publicity stunt. I love it. Yeah. Like I hope he, I'm pretty sure he's going to wear it for a while, you know, I love be it. outside with it for at least a year and a half and keep mm-hmm. that whole narrative going. But yep. I thought yeah, it was a very like on brand Drake post rollout move. I because Drake with his post rollout move or even his rollout move in general usually hit a couple of check boxes. It needs to be lavish, right? Be yes. some money shit. Yep. It needs to be about or revolve around women in one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually he does some type of like goodwill thing, like a donation check. He I haven't seen him do that yet, so I don't know if that's coming eventually or like I don't know. Maybe he donates the necklace or something at some point. I don't know. Yeah, he does usually. Yeah, do that. But he ain't hit that box yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So I'm Maybe assuming it's coming. He donates the money. To forty two women, that'd be fine. Whatever the worth of each of these jewels are. Yeah. Now, I didn't know about this one until you know right before we hopped on for this episode. So, where was it shown? That'll give me more information too. Like, was this Drake posting on his page? How did this get out there in the first place? I ain't even gonna lie. I saw it on the chat room because they have like audio behind it too. It's like a whole little narrator talking and shit. So I don't know. It... Let it play. Let's let's let it play for people to hear it then real quick. All right, bet. Yeah, I'm gonna refresh the page. 
But y'all can have this contact. Bordering the impossible. An expedition spanning 14 months. Every diamond hand-selected, inspected to only suit perfection. This monumental art piece was assembled using 351.38 carats of diamonds, mounted in 18K white gold. Each stone meticulously set, utilizing the eagle claw technique. Previous engagements, for all the times he thought about it, but never did. A true wonder of the jewelry world, presented by Alex Moss, New York, and Drake. So maybe the designer posted. I'm gonna check real quick. Bordering the impossible. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't think it was on Drake's page. That's an idea. I doubt Drake. This isn't the type of thing that you post on your own page. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're like a more jokey brand and like I don't know, you put out that kind of content. Yeah, you just have it as a conversation and never really validate it unless he pops up. Right now, yeah. oh yeah, all of a sudden he's wearing it. Yeah, what was the name of the design? Like Alex Moss or something? Yeah, it sounded like Alex. Let's see if he got tagged. Oh yeah, Alex Moss posted it. Yep, the designer posted it. Yep, that would make sense. I was about to say, that's a great collab. I mean, get your name out there. The designer probably did that shit for free. And I know they paid for this Shade Room post. I know it. And now it's, oh. on, Alex, now it's on his page. I know it. This, oh, yeah, of this, course, this Shade Room yeah. wouldn't have known, known about it otherwise. Yeah, bro. Yep, Alex Moss. Let's figure out a little bit more about Alex. 138K subscribers. New piece tied up. Previous engagements from all the times. Do -do. Thought about it, but he never did. Yep, made for Drake. Now, I wonder if the designer came up with the idea, or Drake did, or they were just having like a casual conversation and like came out, of, you know, mm -hmm. randomly um, came to this conclusion together to do this. Look, man, that fan got the right idea. Bro moving different. Should have named this piece her loss. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Random fan. Yeah. Oh, let, me, <laughs> let me share that on the screen so you can see this. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's definitely <laughs> where they should have went with it. One million dollars for a dinner with Alex Moss. I'm taking the dinner. <laughs> 42 times. We see. Jamie's a better therapist. 42 women are punching the air right now. Yep. The thought process behind this is so Drake, 350 carats. See, and the comments in the, are always so important when these moves are made because that gauges the perception. Yeah. Right? Like the fact that people are saying this is so Drake means. That his brand, his POV mm -hmm. has stuck. Mm -hmm. Right? People get it. They know who he are, who he is. And we know that jokes are only funny when people get the context of it. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to know. So the same thing goes with things that aren't jokes sometimes. You know, or the things can be perceived the right or wrong way. Because he's actually stuck and has hit hit the commercial scale. He can do stuff like this without having to explain. Everybody's not in a place where they can just drop something like this yeah. and it have the right impact. That's important to to um, to say because I see a lot of people try to do something like this from an artistic perspective, that, uh, perspective, but there's not enough people that know you and get you, whoever you are, for you to just be able to do something like that and even connect with your small fan base. It's like, yeah, I only know a little bit of your songs, but I don't understand you yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let me see. I, w I wonder which one was Rihanna's. And people also understand enough about his past yeah. <laughs> in general. I don't think almost getting married 20, 42 times is as much of a flex as Drake thinks it is. This is almost, this is the most petty, toxic, and beautiful thing I've ever seen. Well, damn, how many women did he ran through to have thought about 42 engagements? I mean, that's an interesting look. That's the point they're making on Twitter. They're calling Drake ran through on Twitter. Well, no, that's a <laughs> Drake ran through. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, that's an interesting question because if you think about it, like a funnel, assuming that you don't want to get engaged to every single person, right? And that's a rarer thing. Then you got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like I shoot my shot at five hundred women. Yeah, you know, two fifty hit me back. Maybe one twenty five. We go on a date. Seventy, I think, are cool. <laughs> and then 42, I actually proposed it. That makes sense. Yeah. That, the conversion number's lining up. Yeah, I don't know. I think the conversion might have to be a little bit bigger on top of the funnel. But, you know, it's, it's yeah. it, 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 the, the, the overall idea is there. Do you have a, you know, well, I don't want to derail it too much. But, you know, do you, do you have a thought on that question that you just posed about Twitter? 
What, 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 you about? said something about it was Drake Rambo. Why? <laughs> I don't. I don't want your answer on that. <laughs> I don't want your answer. On that. I was like, wait, man, no, nah, I ain't think. I ain't think too deep into that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but why men are looked at differently than women in those scenarios? No, nah, I ain't got no opinion on it. You don't got no nah, opinion. No, nah, not keep one. It, keep it safe. Keep <laughs> it one. safe. I ain't, I ain't about to be calling me Corey type. Hey. <laughs> Yo, look, you know, look, me, I don't, I don't mind. Uh, what's the word? Walking the tightrope every once in a while. I mean, well, so I, I would say it's because he's Drake. He can get away with For it. For him, he's the he's status Drake. is the bigger thing, right? Like, I, and I think we we definitely are in a space where, generally speaking, really famous women get some level of that benefit of the doubt. They have more flexibility than other women. You're like regular right? women, yeah. Like, I think Kim Kardashian gets more flexibility on that. Lori Harvey. Right? Lori Harvey gets more flexibility on that. So she's had the whole NDA thing drop a couple of right. times. Bro, that's crazy. Amazing. That's yeah. Crazy. Right? <laughs> Beautiful. So so I think there's that goes back to branding perception. Like I, I look at everything from that perspective. Yeah. Traditionally, something that conversation has to do with the value of someone. Right? That's kind of like right or wrong, that's how it gets looked at. And then when you're super famous, there's already so much perceived value there. Hmm. It doesn't like I don't think that thing has as much impact because you still have clear value. Yeah. Right? Right or yeah. wrong, right? But I think that really goes to a value conversation. That's why fame kind of dilutes some of it. And I think a famous woman still gets more flack than a famous man in that yeah. kind of category. So to that, I'll just say, look, women. <laughs> Should make sure they collectively call males like that hoes. Okay, I didn't know where you were going with that, man. Nah, was, see, look, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, man. Like, you know, like, I, was, oh, man. I play with the outside, <laughs> but I make sure I stay straight, bro. Like, that's all I'm saying. Y'all, it's up to y'all to make sure y'all collectively treat them accordingly how you feel like they should be treated, right? Or yeah. us, you know, you know what I mean? But, like, because from a male's perspective, Most dudes just don't really care about other dudes. Okay, yeah. I don't care what he doing. Yeah. I'm not gonna think to label him anything <laughs> good, bad, ugly. You know what I'm saying? They're just labeling yeah. women, right for right or wrong, whatever the label is. We can go through all the labels and categories, right? But dudes just not think about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't care because I don't deal with that. That's how a lot of it comes off. But if you are a woman that cares about men or whatever, and you feel like they're not getting the equal side, make sure we feel that heat. Yeah, That's all I'm saying. Whatever the repercussions, man. Call, start calling enough dudes ran through. <laughs> yeah, that shit would hurt my feelings. That's, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, damn, ran through? What? Crazy, man. <laughs> what? You hear, feel violated just hearing it. <laughs> like, I never I never thought of it like that. Hey, hey, I, you, you don't see no, have you ever seen any of those uh, clips on like Instagram or something where it'll be like a, a couple where a wife would just walk behind a dude and just like grope him or like yeah. slap his ass yeah. and dude be feeling, hey, y'all, <laughs> y'all treat dudes, you know, in, in, in that way, you know, maybe maybe the message will be got. You know, I'm not encouraging that. So I know some of the, the men be like, man, man, like you a, you a simple, why are you paying her to do something? So I'm like, I'm not saying that, like, don't get mad at me, guys, you know what I'm saying? But, just, you know, that is a solution. <laughs> That is a solution, and I and I and I think it'll work. If it doesn't, if it doesn't solve the problem, it'll get you in the right direction. I, well, I can't give you all the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, artist, man, we've talked about some of these influencers. They're just running laps. They're they're killing the game when it comes to streams, getting views in this music. And the problem that creates for a lot of artists who don't feel valued. And I show speed is one of those artists who is really applying that pressure. He's applying pressure. And it's something worth talking about because I show speed. Jacory, I'll let Jacory explain who this is, but this guy has six point four five hundred thousand monthly listeners. So six point four million. I'll just say that. I, confu- yeah, I, I confuse people. Yeah, I was like, what? I start reading wrong. He has six point four million plus monthly listeners. 
25 million on a song called World Cup, 36 million on a song called Shake, 16 million on a song called Ronaldo, 14 million on a song called Bounce That Ass with two dollar signs for the S because you know how it gotta go. And Shake Part Two Get Down has three million. Sheesh. Out here, bro. Those are some serious numbers. Crazy. And he ain't even a real artist. And if y'all listen to the music, y'all be like, what the hell? I'm not going to even lie. You know what I mean? I think I could <laughs> confidently say this and feel like he wouldn't fully be offended because he doesn't seem to make a career as an artist. So I say that like, bro, this, this this ain't great music. <laughs> it just isn't. Yeah, I don't think he'd be offended by yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I think that's part of the joke and everything. But it's killing it. So, Ja'Cory, can you explain I show speed to the people? First off, speed is an anomaly. He can't be explained. Mm. He just is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, now I'm just playing, but <laughs> but no, nah, but Speed is like this this really popular um, YouTube streamer, mm-hmm. um, like, but he's like a big troll is the best way to put it. But he he's uh, well known for streaming with like Kasanat, who's like another popular streamer, but on Twitch, um, Aiden Ross, like they all kind of like at least at this point are, are cool with each other. And I know personally, I wasn't familiar with him until. Maybe around five, six months ago, mm-hmm. um, I learned about him and Kyle at the same time. They had a bunch of different clips like going viral on TikTok. Speed more so because of how like outlandish his antics tend to be. Like he's a he's a character, bro. If you've never watched the Speed video, like go watch the Speed video. It's gonna be wild at first, and you you grow to love him. You know, he's a very lovable guy. You know what I'm saying? Very cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When he's normal, like he's he's very chill down to earth. And then when he's in character, he's in character. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I appreciate that about him. He don't break character for nothing. And I think that's, I like my influencers to not break character. You know what I'm saying? At least not while the camera on. You know what I'm saying? Do it off, off screen. So I don't know exactly when he started making music, but the World Cup song is the song where I first became aware that he even made music. Um, and I was talking to you about it before, but when it was timely, like the World Cup is, is currently going on as, as we talk about this, right? So mm-hmm. he, he called that right at the top of the World Cup. So now everybody looking that shit up, you know what I'm saying? Looking for it. I think his video is still like the number three video on YouTube and probably because it's about the World Cup. You know what I'm saying? I think it was about just mm-hmm. like his other songs. It wouldn't have went as far. So he has this, he has the, the, the streaming audience, massive streaming audience. I think his YouTube channel is like crazy, bro. Like maybe three, four million, you know what I'm saying? Uh, subscribers. Um, he has an audience already. He makes a timely song of 14 million. My bad, Speed. If you see this, bro, I mean, no disrespect about that three, four million, bro. I don't, I don't want to shit on your numbers like that. But 14 million subscribers, um, arguably one of the largest streamers out right now. You know, Twitch and YouTube, we talk both of those. I think he's at least top 10. You know what I'm saying? Um, the streams I've watched, bro, easily bring in like 200,000 to like half a million people to stream. You know what I'm saying? Like crazy shit. And I know the other thing that that made him go crazy, um, I think he was one of the first YouTubers. I might be wrong. It might have been Kyle I'm thinking of, but one of them was like the first one to hit like a million subs on, on like Twitch or some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and they, they got like a lot of press around that. But yeah, but he's just another influencer that I think is doing music because they think it's fun and his audience is right there having fun with him. And because of that, he has six million monthly listeners. You know, like I mean, World Cup alone, we can do the math on it. You know what I'm saying? That's at least that's at least 100k off of just Spotify. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be in the man pockets and that, but you know, I know my streaming numbers and what that equates to. <laughs> <laughs> that's about 80 to 100k, depending on what the countries. You know what I'm saying? Are streaming oh, or what the song is streaming at? You know, so I personally have nothing against it. You know, you know my stance on influencers turn artists. I like it personally. You know what I'm saying? I was I was broken into that culture by DDG. Personally, you know what I'm saying? So I, I don't mind it. Um, now, I personally like this generation of influencer turned artists more than the ones that kind of started, like the Rice Gums and shit like that. I ain't, I ain't really fuck with them. Or the Paul Brothers and shit. Um, because where theirs felt almost predatory to the music culture, Speed and I think DDG and some of these other influencer turned artists. Like, it just feels like they're just, like, having fun. Like, there are people who grew up in the culture who in their life has never wanted to make a rap song. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, everybody's wanted to do it. He just is lucky, not even lucky, but blessed enough to have an audience that could actually make that shit go. That's the only difference between him and your cousin that keeps telling you every Christmas that he about to write some shit that's going to come out next year. Like, all right, cuz, I'll do your thing, man. I don't believe you, but, you know, whatever makes you happy. You have fun, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? See, and this why, this is really, I should have started. Like, let's start. Like, let's start here. here. This was going to really... Make some of y'all go damn. 
Yeah, this is the thing. So there's a post for I Show Speed on Rappers Captured. Shout out to y'all. Yeah, shout out to Rappers Captured. Man, that was a tongue twister. Right Ten there. rappers that I Show Speed has more monthly listeners than. He's a big rapper too. Kevin Gates. He has more monthly listeners than Sofago. Tied with Glorilla. Crazy. More monthly listeners than Ice Spice. Crazy. Mm. More monthly listeners than ESTG. More monthly listeners than Sleazy World Go, Coyle Ray, Lucky, DDG, and Freddie Gibbs. Crazy, bro. Crazy. I mean, we're talking about career rappers in some of these cases or Glorilla, like, hot at the moment. Yeah, it's a, it's a right? couple different niches on top. You got Kevin Gates and Freddie Gibbs. Not legacy artists, but very well established mm-hmm. core fan base artists, right? Doing better than them. So Fago Glorilla, Ice Spice, ESTG, Sleazy World Go, hot artists, like currently up and coming hot artists with a viral song. Cola Rao would throw in that same bucket too. Um and then Lucky's is in that weird like underground, but I got a big cult fan base type of space. You know what I'm saying? Like he ain't all the way up here, but he ain't all the way down there. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like these are artists that represent a bunch of different demographics across the music industry. And yeah. he is doing better than all of them, bro. That's crazy. <sighs> Amazing, even. Man, it's crazy to see. Because, of course, when someone has one viral song, I'm like, all right, you know, anybody can catch that. It's just the fact that he has, you know, a song with 25 million, song with 36 million. Because the World Cup isn't even his greatest streaming song. I didn't know about the Shake song. Yeah, but World Cup right. also just came out a month ago. Shake that came but, out a couple months ago. That's fair. Yeah. So it's probably going to outstream it based on the pace, yeah. right? But the Ronaldo song has 16 million. Yeah, I mean, it's got there. I don't know how fast it's moved, but it's at 16 million at this point. And then both of those, you know, soccer related. Mm-hmm. So is soccer like a serious thing for him? Or something? Yeah, he loves soccer. So he, he loves he, uh, soccer. I don't, you didn't you didn't see the video of him crying because uh, I think because Spain got knocked out. Knock out the world. I Cup. heard about that video. Yeah, he was like crying on his live stream. It went yeah, viral. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy <sighs> speed. I felt speed. You know what I'm saying? So I get the World Cup and Ronaldo song going because his love for soccer probably emanates to his audience. He probably has a lot of audience that also watches it and connects with him in that way. Mm-hmm. So it's something you can play with. But Shake, why? I think. Because I wasn't watching him at that time. I honestly don't know. I think Shake might have caught a moment on TikTok. I could be wrong, though. But Shake also is like, it's kind of in the same lane as Jersey, what is it, Jersey Club music? Mm. And Jersey Club music is having a moment on TikTok. Mm. Like, you know, at least as of this year, um, Jersey Club music has gotten a lot of recognition because of TikTok. Got you. So I, I, a part yeah. of me feels like he might have just like right time, like right timing, you know, like drop the song at a good time. TikTok is starting to fuck with me. I'm going up. You know, and it just kind of hit over there. But I honestly don't know how that one came out. Because like I said, World Cup was when I even became aware that he made music. Before, I just thought he was this goofy motherfucker on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then the World Cup video came out. I was like, oh, is this like an ad? Is this sponsored? <laughs> I was like, oh, this is serious. Like, this shit is on DSPs. And then, you know, kind of went down a rabbit hole from there. But, yeah, I don't even, I think, because I think he just started releasing music maybe last year. See, it's like these brands to me, like when I see... People like him, I think about people who learn from Boonk mm. and figure, how do I do this better without the risk, right? The the risk of danger, mm-hmm. the shoot, harm to myself, the the unfounded, I won't say unfounded, the, the polarization in the wrong way where you're creating people who are following you for the wrong reasons and then people that you're going to want to like you to hate you mm-hmm. all right like a lot of the things of how boom moved was that all right even though he created a really big moment really fast <laughs> i think all those influences learn from them i feel like they yeah. learn yeah, yeah they a learn lot of them yeah. watch people like him and this is where i go back to the idea of does anybody can benefit from marketing without being a marketing genius, Mm. right? And people will do things and think, oh, this person's a marketing genius. They're a genius, how they're doing it, but it just happened. There's plenty of organic moments to just go and make things pop. Or you just like doing things, you can lean in and maybe troll a little bit, but Mm. trolling is not marketing genius, right? 
That's where I like to draw the line. Like trolling is not marketing things. These random moments that happen, all of these things can be used in, as a part of marketing, but there's a lot more that connects it all. And you start to see that over time in terms of where it gets channeled. Yeah. Does the career last? And um, or does it get channeled to the people to, that you actually want to monetize in the bucket that you want to stay in? There's there's a lot of things that go to it. And I feel like in the music industry, especially, we lightly throw out terms like, oh man, they're a genius. They're, they're marketing shit that they just did. When it's just people trolling or being polarizing, which are easy things to gain attention, but there's so many more tiers to marketing. And I feel like you, I don't know, I feel, I feel like we're too loose with that term, man. Like the, the, the clout we give towards people marketing abilities. Cause I've heard that term thrown out on a lot of people that you don't even hear about no more. I'll mm -hmm. say that. Yeah, I was uh, uh I was calling Lil Pump a marketing genius back in twenty eighteen. You know. I've seen the error of my ways. You know. I was young. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just good at getting attention, marketing and that's even the one thing. I think people think getting attention is marketing. Mm. It's Again, a start. It's a start. It's yeah. a part of marketing. Right? And getting attention for better or worse is is there is some things that you could do, a few boxes that you could pretty easily get attention in, mm. you know, in, in our industry. Now, who is a marketing genius in music? As an artist, I would like to have a comment one day, a convo about which artist that we would probably say. We should do a ranking. Yeah, a ranking? Yeah, I could. Cause I, I feel like if I thought hard enough about it, I could come up with at least three. All right. Yeah. Yeah, we could we could we could do the ranking, and the ranking probably would be some shit they argue about in the comments. I'm, I'm for that person. Yeah, I, I like that. I like <laughs> that. All right, bet. All right, bet. We, we're definitely gonna do that one day. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the list. But for now, we're out for this episode. I'm Sean. I'm Corey, and we're out. Peace.